So hello everyone, I'm Oscar Koller and uh, thanks for the introduction. This is joint work with Herman Nye and Richard Bowden. So let's start. Um, we all know CNNs are great for a variety of uh, computer vision tasks, but they require a large amount of uh, supervised training data. So this talk is about uh, how to train a CNN using only weekly supervised continuous data. So how would you train a CNN on video data? Well, I guess the typical computer vision person would probably want frame labels to train as classifier. But let's face it, um, this type of annotation is uh, not very appropriate and very time consuming to produce. If you look at recent data sets in affect recognition, grasping recognition, um, action recognition or even gesture recognition, most of it comes actually with labels on the, with frame labels. So let's reverse it. How can you annotate video data? Well, the first type of annotation essentially assigns a specific label to each of the frames in your annotation, in your video. Um, if we relax that a bit and provide just the start and the end uh, segmentation and the labeling that occurs in between, this is what we refer to as time boundary labels. This is uh, much less supervision and um, be aware that these labels, they occur somewhere within the boundaries. They don't necessarily spend the whole boundaries. The third type are weak time boundary labels. So here we are given a multitude of labels that may occur or may not occur within these time boundaries. So the third type are actually the labels that we want to train our classifier with because this data is virtually everywhere around us and we want to make use of it. So think in action recognition. You can use movie data set databases with scripts and you can use the scripts as source of, of weak supervision. Or think in sign language recognition. There, there are millions of clips out there that come with the trans translation for free, right? So, so how can we make use of this type of data? Um, we looked at a community that has been dealing with continuous data for several decades now, the speech recognition community. And we, we propose a framework that makes use of their ideas and embed very strong vision models into that. So let's look at it in, in detail. Um, the main idea of, of the, of the um, algorithm is that given an initialization, we use expectation maximization to iteratively refine our alignment and our model on the data. So, so what does that mean? Well, in terms of initialization, we need some initial frame alignment for our videos, right? Um, given that frame alignment, that initialization, we can perform the maximization step, which here is essentially training a CNN, assuming that this data is strongly supervised, but it's not. The second step then is using this CNN in an expectation step to perform a HMM alignment on our video data. So this is actually the interesting part. The CNN training, it could be a feed-forward network, it could be a, a recurrent LSTM network, uh, whatever is trained on, on a per-frame basis. This HMM alignment is actually a hybrid CNN HMM, um, which uh, doesn't need any retraining, and that's the nice thing about it. It's, it's a, essentially an infer inference step only. Once we have this new alignment, we can use that again to retrain our CNN. We do that, we have a nicer CNN, a better one now, and we use that again for the alignment. So this iteration is essential for our algorithm. So let's look in detail in the HMM alignment. We have our CNN at the bottom, and you all know the CNN um, outputs uh, posterior probabilities for our, given, for our class, given an input uh, image X. So we want to use these posterior probabilities directly in a, a HMM framework. So we don't need to retrain the HMMs. Um, we do that, we construct a single HMM per class that we have, right? Um, once we have these HMMs, we can construct video label HMMs and that's where our type three weekly labeled uh, information goes in. So we have a, a video and the annotation, the, the possible al alternative labels would be represented here um, in an alternative paths in our HMM. Then we can essentially do a, 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 a per class posterior um, um, maximization across the whole video sequence and find the most likely path um, and the best alignment given, given these probabilities. The problem is that in the HMM framework we actually we're required to use um, likelihoods. 
whereas our CNN outputs posterior probabilities. So we, we use a little trick with base rules. We convert our, our posterior output by the class counts, um, by the priors of the classes, um, and uh, turn them into scaled likelihoods. So then we can use them directly as observation probabilities in the HMM framework. Um, so that's what, what, what happens here. So we optimize essentially across a whole sequence searching for the, for the most likely um, uh, path of alignments and uh, we assume a first order Markov dependency here and a maximum approximation which allows us to, to efficiently implement this. So we, we were looking for an application of this. So, so we thought, okay, let's look at hand shape classification in sign language. Um, this task actually lends itself very well to, to this sort of uh, weakly supervised algorithm because think in annotating hand shapes. This is very difficult. Hands are highly articulated, uh, moving objects. So, so you spend a lot of time just annotating a uh, few uh, samples like the ones given here, right? Um, so in terms of experiments, we want to learn a fine-grained hand shape classifier that distinguishes 60 different hand shapes. Very fine-grained uh, differences between these. And we only have weekly supervised data available. In terms of our uh, CNN model, we are, we are relying on a, um, a feed-forward Google Net structure which has been pre-trained on ImageNet. As a standard uh, way, we replace the final softmax by our class count, which is 60 plus an additional garbage class. And then we fine-tune all layers with a fixed learning rate. And the important part is that we, we fine-tune from this pre-trained model every time in every iteration. So in terms of data, we have access to uh, two different um, sign language lexica. One for the Danish, one for the New Zealand dictionary. Both together feature around 450,000 frames. And um, they, they come with annotated canonical hand shapes for a given sequence. So this is the type of two or three in between of type two and three uh, annotation because the hand shapes sometimes don't occur or the, the persons don't uh, sign in the canonical form, right? But the actual corpus that we're interested in, in working with is a much larger corpus. It's the uh, Phoenix 2014 Continuous Sign Language Corpus which features 800,000 frames. The problem here is it only comes with annotations on the sign level. So there's no hand shape annotation at all. We make use of an additional data set, which is called sign writing. It's an open uh, source, online, user-edited resource where people essentially create mappings from sign to this sort of pictor pictorial structure. And you have like here displayed rain. And so we can pass that and we can create a mapping from signs to, to uh, occurring, potentially occurring hand shapes. So this is clearly type 3 uh, weekly labeled. We have a sequence of signs, we can convert them into potential hand shapes, right? So let's look at it in detail. We have our input images, we track them, perform pre-processing, crop the hand patches around, uh, perform uh, per pixel mean normalization. Then we initialize our algorithm. Uh, if we have no better clue, we simply do a flat start where we uh, linearly uh, segment our input stream in equidistant parts. And then we train first our CNN in, uh, in the first uh, iteration and we use that uh, CNN to perform an alignment on our data which refines the, the, the boundaries which essentially uh, or possibly chooses a different uh, annotation from the constraints that our weekly uh, uh, supervised data gives us. And the nice thing is at the end we get a very strong vision model and we get the segmentation for free. So in terms of evaluation, we look at single frame evaluation where we've annotated uh, over 3,000 single images on our data set. And we look at continuous sign language recognition where we have a whole uh, video sequence as input and the task is to uh, predict the sequence of signs that, that has been signed here. We perform uh, our evaluation against uh, two standard benchmark data sets. One is, uh, uh, features nine different signers across uh, over 1,000 signs, and the other one features a single signer over 500 signs. So in terms of per frame classification, so here you see on the x-axis um, the uh, improvement in accuracy, uh, in per frame classification accuracy across our iterations of our algorithm. And um, 
The green line sh shows just using the Danish data, the blue line adds the New Zealand uh, dictionary data set to it, and then the, the final red line that is coming up now shows the Phoenix data. And we see the more data we, we add to it, the, the better we get. And we reach a final accuracy of 62.8%, whereas chance would be 1 out of 61 classes. We see in the bottom uh, qualitative results um, where you see the, the input image and uh, that is one image out of the sequence and we have a single frame uh, classification here with a prediction and then the manual label uh, beside it. And we see it's, it's reasonable. But let's, let's look at it in more detail. What happens here? So uh, we can see some uh, uh, classification errors obviously. So um, you see here a hypothesized so-called F-hand shape where the, f the index and the thumb should be touching. Right? So um, this makes very much sense um, because our annotation comes from the canonical forms of, of sign language. So it's a limitation of the annotation here. In terms of the correct classification, actually, we see that the model generalizes across different poses and different individuals and also deals with occlusion. So in terms of continuous sign language recognition, we are able to outperform the state of the art on, uh, in two different um, sets uh, by over 15%. And in terms of conclusion, we can, we, we can say that we effectively trained a C CNN on sequence data, we only needed weekly labeling, and it generalized over individuals and data sets. And you can see here an example of a, this completely unseen video where it still performs quite reasonable. Yeah, we achieved 15% relative improvement over the state of the art. And um, well, in terms of future work, we'd like to look at different modalities applying this approach and um, see if we can incorporate weighted alignments instead of these hard alignments that we're currently using to train the CNN. Thank you very much.